Hello students. Today let us continue with the two component system. In last few classes we have done one component system and in two component system we have done red silver system, ferric chloride water system and in today's class we are going to go ahead with sodium potassium system. As we all know the types of two component system involving solid liquid equilibria are of three types that is type 1 where the components do not react to each other and under this we have studied lead silver system and in type 2 where the components do not react to form a, do not the components react to form a compound with congruent melting point and under this we have studied ferric chloride water system in today's class, we are mainly going to deal with the type 3 where the components react to form a compound with incongruent melting point. Like what is an incongruent melting point? Here, the compound formed does not remain stable up to its melting point but will decompose before its melting point. And in today's class, we are going to concentrate regarding sodium potassium system. A quick revision of what is eutectics. A liquid mixture of two components which has the lowest freezing point compared to all the other liquid mixture is called a eutectic mixture. Students, a liquid mixture of two components which has the lowest freezing point compared to all the other liquid mixtures is called a eutectic mixture. Here in this case what do we observe is this mixture freezes out completely at it's at a constant temperature. At one constant temperature, the whole mixture freezes out completely and here the composition or the proportion is going to remain the same. For example, for example, cadmium bismuth system or bismuth cadmium system containing 40% of cadmium and 60% by mass of bismuth will melt at 144 degrees Celsius. Remember, this composition by mass of 40% cadmium and 60% by mass of bismuth will melt at 144 degrees Celsius which is much lower than the melting point of bismuth which is 271 degrees Celsius and cadmium of 321 degrees Celsius. Let us just know a quick revision of what is congruent and incongruent melting point. Coming to a congruent melting point in congruent melting point, what do we observe is systems in which the two pure components react to form a compound. Here, two pure components react to form a compound which is stable up to its melting point. And, it's, and at melting point, it melts to give a liquid with the same composition. And under this, we have studied ferric chloride water system in the last class. In today's class, concentrating mainly on the incongruent melting point systems in which two pure components react to form a compound that does not remain stable up to its melting point. What do we observe is here the two components react to form a compound which does not remain stable up to its melting point. What happens is when we start heating it decomposes before the melting point to give a new solid phase and a solution with composition which is going to be different from that of solid phase. And under this, we are going to study in today's class sodium potassium system. Another example is going to be sodium sulphate water system as well. Coming to sodium potassium system, here this is going to be an example for an incongruent melting point. So, a compound is said to possess an incongruent melting point if it is going to decompose much below its melting point and forms a new solid phase and a solution having different composition. Here, what do we observe is it has no sharp melting point. Remember, this system will not have a sharp melting point. How about original solid is it going to be in equilibrium with new solid plus solution melt. The decomposition at this temperature, that is at which temperature it is going to decompose, that is that temperature will be called as a transition temperature 
meritectic or peritectic reaction and the temperature will be called as transition temperature or meritectic or peritectic temperature. Examples under this is going to be sodium potassium system, gold antimony system, picric acid benzene system. Now a phase diagram. So this is going to be the phase diagram of sodium potassium system. As pressure does not have any effect on the solid liquid equilibria, the degree of freedom is represented by the reduced phase rule expression which is given as F dash is equal to C minus P plus 1. So in sodium potassium system, we are going to use the reduced phase rule expression which is given as F dash is equal to C minus P plus 1. A phase diagram contains areas, curves and points. So in the next slide, we are going to first consider areas, then curves and then the points. Coming to the areas, coming to the areas, let us consider the area ACF. So in this curve, in this area ACF, I have got solid potassium and liquid. Remember, in this area ACF, I have got solid potassium and liquid. Considering the area ACG, in this area ACG, I have got solid I have got solid sodium potassium and liquid. In this area ACG, I have got solid sodium potassium and liquid. Coming to the area B, coming to the area BDH. In this BDH, I have got solid sodium and liquid. I have got solid sodium and liquid. So students, in the area ACF, I have got solid potassium and liquid. In the area, in the in the area ECG, I have got solid sodium potassium and liquid. And in the area BDH, I have got only solid sodium and liquid. And using the, using the reduced uh, phase rule expression, I will be having, because in this area, any point taken in this area will have two components, will have two phases. And so, on substituting it, it is, I will be getting 1 and so any point taken in this area, any point taken in this area is going to be a univariant system. Next, let us consider the area below FCG. Area below FCG has got only sodium potassium and has got sodium, has got solid potassium and solid sodium potassium. The area below FCG has got solid potassium and solid sodium potassium. Considering the area IHLK, in this area IHLK, I have got solid sodium and I have got solid sodium potassium. Remember below FCG I had solid potassium and solid sodium potassium. But in this area IHLK, I have got solid sodium and solid sodium potassium. Now considering the area above, considering the area above ACDB in this area, considering here ACDB, I will be having only liquid, I will be having only liquid. So students, in this area AC, area, area below FCG and in the area IHLK, I'll be I'll be having two faces, two components. I'll be having two faces, two components. So in this area below FCG and in this area IH IHLK, it is going to be a univariant system. But area above ACDB, it is going to be only one face. As there is going to be only one face, I'll be having one face, two components. And when I substitute in the reduced phase expression, it is going to be 2. So, above this area, it is going to be a bivariant. Now, after discussing the areas, let us discuss the curves. Coming to the curve AC. Coming to the curve AC, this is going to represent the depression in freezing point. This curve mainly 
discuss this represents the depression in freezing point of potassium that is as and how i go on adding sodium what happens the temp as and how i go on adding sodium to this point a which represents only potassium what happens the free the freezing point is going to decrease and this continues up to a point c up to the point c so all along this curve put the potassium gets separated out so at this point c at this point c a new new phase that is sodium potassium is going to get separated and at this point the equilibrium the equilibrium gets sets up along this curve is going to be potassium solid is in equilibrium with the melt sodium potassium which is going to be combined so along this curve along this curve i have got two phases along this curve i have got two phases two components two components and all along this curve it is going to be univariant considering next the curve cd considering the curve cd cd is going to represent the fusion curve of the compound sodium potassium this curve is going to represent the fusion curve of sodium potassium so along this curve what do we observe is sodium potassium solid is going to be in equilibrium with the melt here along this curve solid sodium potassium will be in equilibrium with the melt and along this curve what do we find any point on this curve will be having two faces two components so the degree of freedom is going to be one and that is any point along this curve is going to be univariant supposing students if the compound would have been stable as in case of a congruent melting point if it would have been stable then it would have been extend to, to the point e but this is going to be an incongruent system so below before that itself it is going to decompose at the point at the point d itself next coming to the curve bd coming to the curve b d b represents solid sodium itself and this is going to represent the fusion curve of sodium this is going to represent the fusion curve of sodium so or the depression in freezing point of sodium as and how i go on adding potassium potassium there is going to be an equilibrium sets out where sodium is going to get separated out that is along this curve bd what do i observe is sodium is going to be in equilibrium with the melt sodium is going to be in equilibrium with the melt so here also what do i observe is there are two phases it is two component and when i go on to substitute in the reduced phase expression the system is going to be univariant now just let us see what will be the effect of cooling that is what happens when we are going to reduce the temperature along the curve ac and along the curve bd let me consider the curve ac and a point and a point x and a point x in the melt area in the melt area when i am going to reduce the temperature that is when it is going to be cooled it is going to be cooled here it there is going to be no change in composition up to the point x dash there is no change in composition up to the point x dash till the point x dash is reached there is going to be no change in composition with reduce in temperature and after the point x dash is reached with reduce in temperature it takes the path x dash c it takes the path x dash c that is and the, it goes on up to the point c where c is going to be the eutectic that is the lowest temperature which is going to be attained here and at the point c the compound sodium potassium is going to formed at the point c sodium potassium is going to be formed and it gets separated out let me consider another point another point x1 x1 above the curve bd above the curve bd here too when i reduce the temperature when i reduce the temperature what happens is without change in composition it takes the path 
up to x1 dash up to x1 dash and once the point x1 dash is reached solid potassium gets separated out solid sorry solid sodium gets separated out and on further cooling and on further cooling it takes the path x1 dash d it takes the path x1 dash d it is not going to take a straight line but now once it reaches the point x1 dash it takes the path x1 dash d not a straight line d is called as the incongruent melting point that is it is going to decompose it is going to decompose below before the before the melting point itself so d is going to represent the incongruent melting point next let us discuss regarding the points next let us discuss regarding the points i am going to discuss regarding first the point a the point b c and d point a represents point a represents the pure potassium with a melting point of 63.8 degree celsius and point b is going to represent pure sodium with a melting point of 97.8 8 degree celsius at the point a at the point a potassium is in equilibrium solid potassium is in equilibrium is in equilibrium is in equilibrium with liquid potassium at the point a solid potassium is going to be in equilibrium with liquid potassium likewise at the point b solid sodium will be in equilibrium with liquid sodium coming to the point c coming to the point c this is going to be the eutectic point of sodium potassium system the point c is going to be point c is going to be the eutectic point of sodium potassium at this point three phases are going to be in equilibrium at this point c three phases are going to be in equilibrium that is solid potassium is in equilibrium with solid sodium potassium this will be in equilibrium with the melt this is going to be in equilibrium with the melt and at this point when i go on to substitute three phases two components in the reduced phase expression i'll be getting it as zero so at this point the system is going to be in variant considering another point d which is present in this phase diagram this the point d is going to represent the incongruent melting point of the system and it is going to be 70 degrees celsius at this point the unstable at this point 70 degrees celsius the stable at the unstable compound sodium potassium decomposes at this point it decomposes to solid sodium and the melt at this point it is becomes unstable and decomposes to solid sodium and the melt and this is known as the peritectic point so this was all about in sodium potassium system and the references was from principles of physical chemistry by puri sharma and pathania and chemistry for engineers by dr bk ambadas okay students thank you